Good afternoon. Thank you. It's such a pleasure and an honor to have been selected as a TEDx Pittsburgh speaker, and I thank you all for coming today. So I'm going to start out by asking a question. How many of you have ever done or said something, excuse me, start again with that question. How many of you have ever done or said something to an individual that you knew was mean, nasty, rude, and immediately after you said it, you thought, I probably need their forgiveness? Now, I'm not asking you to raise your hand or nudge the person next to you or even give a side eye to let me know that they did that. <laughs> I'll admit that I have. I have. I've said some mean and nasty things rude things to my ex-husband. And some of those things, as soon as I said them, I thought, I hope he forgives me one day. Now, some things I said it took me a couple years later to really want forgiveness. But we're in a good place right now. We're in a very good place where we both are at a place where we've forgiven one another. So I want you to think about that one person that you said or did something to that was mean. And think about these scenarios. So let's imagine that at, my, at our son's high school graduation, where they're celebrating our son, engaging, and enjoying him, and my ex-husband comes up to me and says, you know, I want to talk to you about what you said 15 years ago. I want to know why you said it, and I want to tell you how it made me feel. Now let's fast forward to our son's college graduation. Again, where they're honoring our son, celebrating him, but my ex-husband comes up to me and says, I want to talk to you about what you said 19 years ago. I want to know why you said it, and I want you to know how it made me feel. Now let's fast forward to our son's wedding. So you get my point. That would be perpetual punishment for me, to have to continually be reminded of something that I did, something that I said that I knew was wrong, but something that I wanted forgiveness for. And there are many individuals that live like that. I couldn't live like that, but I don't know if you could, but I couldn't live like that. But there are many individuals here in the city of Pittsburgh that live their lives like that. They live in a state of perpetual punishment because they don't have forgiveness. They don't have societal forgiveness. These are individuals that have criminal records. In the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, there were 401,288 individuals who were arrested and charged with a crime in Pennsylvania in 2014. Out of that 401,000, 226,000 received some type of formal conviction that moved through the legal process. And the remaining 174,000 received a lesser charge, some type of citation, like a ticket for disorderly conduct, something like that. Now let's wrap our head around that number, 401,288 individuals arrested and charged. That's greater than the population of the city of Pittsburgh in, 20, in 2015, July of 2015, 305,412. That would be all of us in this theater, and then some, that had been arrested and charged. And once you have charges, not just conviction, but charges on your record, you have this record. And this record follows you through your life, unless you do something about it. This record creates a box. It puts individuals in a box. And in this box, these individuals live. Their lives are dictated by this box, meaning that when they want to apply for a job, they've got to mark a box saying, yes, I was charged with or convicted of a felony or a misdemeanor. Applying for housing, mark the box. Were you charged or convicted of a felony or misdemeanor? educational loans, mark the box. Have you ever been convicted or charged with drug possession or intent to deliver? Mark the box. This box dictates their lives. 
For individuals that were charged and convicted, some may have been incarcerated. And when they were incarcerated, they lived in a cell. And when they come out of jail, their lives are still dictated by those cells. And those individuals that weren't incarcerated, their lives are still dictated by those cells. This box has a profound effect on individuals, on their ability to get employment, housing, and education. And I work with these individuals every day. I see what they go through. I hear their stories. I'm a clinical professor of law at Duquesne University School of Law. Now, I think some of you might be thinking, clinical professor, I don't understand that. Clinical and law, what does that mean? Well, I like to call myself <laughs> the Annalise Keating of Pittsburgh. <laughs> Much like Annalise Keating, I too work with law students on live cases. Those live cases that my students work on, they work under my attorney ID, and we represent individuals that are trying to clear their record. They're trying to get out of that box. And we work in the civil rights clinic because we know the majority of individuals that have records are people that look like me. They're black and brown because we have the highest incarceration rates. And so if you have the record and you're living in this box and you can't get employment, you can't get housing, it has a disparate impact on this group of people. So we do this work in our civil rights clinic. So I teach my students how to do expungements and pardons. Those are two of the legal mechanisms available in Pennsylvania to help one clear their record. So one great misunderstanding, people think, well, I was charged, but it was dismissed, it was drawn, withdrawn, it was null process, meaning it didn't move through the legal process, or I was found not guilty. So that shouldn't be on my record anymore, but that's not true. It stays on your record. And so the first legal mechanism that we use is the expungement process. So by expungement, anything that's withdrawn, dismissed, null process, you're found not guilty, it can be expunged and removed from your record. That takes between 12 and 16 months to be completed. However, there's a caveat. All the fees and fines, all the restitution must be paid before that can be done. So that's the first mechanism. The second legal mechanism that I teach my students is the pardon process. A pardon is available for any individual that was found guilty or pled guilty to a crime and they are going forth before the governor of Pennsylvania, Governor Wolf, asking for a pardon. Now, this process takes four years. It's a four-year process. The first client that I had in the law clinic doing this work was Carol Ramsey. We filed her application on March 9, 2012. The process is filing the application, and about three years later, there may be an investigation, and after that investigation, the board may determine that you're a candidate for a public hearing. We finally got her public hearing in January of 2016. And the students prepped her and took her to Harrisburg. And she gave a wonderful presentation showing that she is re rehabilitated. She has forgiven herself for what was done. And now she's seeking forgiveness from the governor so that she can move on with her life because she wants senior subsidized housing. But right now she can't get it because she must mark the box. So she got a unanimous decision from the pardon board, but right now we're still waiting for Governor Wolf to approve that pardon. Where's the cameras? I, I hope you're listening. We need that pardon. So these are the good stories. This is a great story. But before I get to the great story, I hear the sad stories. I hear the despair from our clients. These are men and women that are looking for forgiveness. A lot of them can't forgive themselves because they're not getting societal forgiveness. Every month I get between 45 and 50 calls from new individuals looking for an opportunity for forgiveness. We provide legal services to those that typically don't have access to legal services because they're unemployed or underemployed. I received a call a couple of months ago from a job counselor in Pittsburgh working with a young man who needed some assistance. He said during his job counseling with this young man, the man became very despondent. He was upset because he couldn't get a job. And the man said, you know, I'm trying to get a job. I'm trying. I'm trying. I have a wife and four children. I can't find work anywhere. And you know what? It might be better for my family if I just kill myself. And this job counselor is calling me to see what I can do to help this man. 
Because the man said, I can't even look my four boys in the eye as a father, and I certainly can't look my wife in the eyes as a husband because I can't take care of them. That's a lot of pressure. And it's a lot of pressure on that man to try and support his family. Other stories I hear, my student, one of my student attorneys and I were assisting a man with expungements. And he came and said, I'm so grateful for what you've done for me. He was there to sign his petitions before we filed them with court. And he said, you know, I don't have any skills. I've never had a real job, not a job where I got a W-2 because I made a bad decision in my life. He never had a real job at 34 years old. And because he never had a real job, he didn't have real housing. He lived with his mother on her couch or his grandmother's home in her basement. These are the stories that I hear. People needing forgiveness, wanting to move forward. But there is a bright light. Here in the city of Pittsburgh, I do see that we're activating our forgiveness. Both the city and the county are banned the box jurisdictions, meaning that individuals who have a record don't have to mark the box if they're applying for a job with Allegheny County or the city of Pittsburgh. They can apply and be just the candidate applying for that job. Their record isn't checked until they go further along in the interview process. And we have a great story of a woman in the clinic who had three matters expunged from her record by her student attorney. We filed her pardon application for two remaining charges or convictions in December, and she applied for a job in January. And she went for her first interview and did extremely well, moved on to the second interview, did extremely well. And she called me. She said, I'm in line for the final interviews, but I'm nervous. They're going to check my record. So I immediately drafted a letter to the Allegheny County manager and to her would-be supervisor, reminding them that Allegheny County is a ban-the-box jurisdiction. Let's make this work. Let's see if it works. That's why you put it in place. And I'm happy to report she is now an employee with Allegheny County and doing a wonderful job. And I saw one of her supervisors a couple of weeks ago who said she's a wonderful addition to their department. This can work. I'm not saying that if you robbed banks and you have a long rap sheet of bank robberies that you should be a bank teller. <laughs> but let's remember, these are individuals that want to work. They want to work, they want to live free, and they want to be educated, and they should be given the opportunity. So the city of Pittsburgh and Allegheny County are activating their forgiveness. The Commonwealth of Pennsylvania is also activating its forgiveness. Governor Wolf just signed some legislation which is going to allow individuals with low-level misdemeanors with the ability to have their records sealed if they have convictions that are 10 years or older. That's going to, again, give them the opportunity to just be a candidate and not be a person living in a box. I think our last frontier with forgiveness is with some private employers and private landlords. Because many of these individuals, again, feel like, I don't want to work with you because of your record. I don't want you living with me. And I don't know if I want you to be educated. So private employers can do the same thing that the county and the city are doing. Because individuals are taking the opportunity to have things removed from their record. They can be removed. But remember, this process takes some time. 12 to 6 months for an expungement, 4 years for a pardon. And if we get people back to work, we can save the $43,000 a year that it costs per inmate to incarcerate them, as described by the Secretary of Corrections, John Wetzel. $43,000 a year. But if we get people back to work, we're strengthening our communities, we're building our families. You have people that are working, they're paying taxes, they're buying goods and services, they're buying property, they're strengthening their family. And that's what we need, that's what we want in Pittsburgh. I would rather my taxes go to things that I can see and not to the $43,000 to house an inmate. But if we don't give them opportunities to work, to live free, and to be educated, they're going to go back into the criminal justice system because that's all they have. So ladies and gentlemen, I ask you to activate your forgiveness. As Martin Luther King said, forgiveness is not an occasional act. 
It's a constant attitude. So City of Pittsburgh, let's activate our attitude of forgiveness. Thank you.